Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Rafael Piroman. The NYPD is looking to crack down on synthetic marijuana, also known as K2, after the recent outbreak of hospitalizations and overdoses in the city caused by that cheap and dangerous drug. In the last two weeks alone, 240 people have overdosed from K2 just in Brooklyn. And since then, the NYPD says it has arrested scores of people and has seized over 1,000 packets of the drug. And joining me now to talk about all this is Newsday reporter Tony DiStefano, who was one of the first reporters in New York City to cover K2 and its dangers to the public. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. Now, first of all, tell us exactly what K2 is and why it's so dangerous. Well, K2 is a, a synthetic drug. Uh, basically, it's vegetation, a weed, sometimes grass clippings that are treated with synthetic chemicals, which can produce various states of euphoria and high. Uh, it's called synthetic marijuana, but uh, it's actually much more dangerous uh, than natural marijuana. And some of the marijuana advocates get uh, angry when you say mm. K2 is synthetic marijuana because there's a bad association. So it's a, it's a synthetic drug treated to vegetation. Yeah. The liberalization of marijuana, is it confusing some people uh, with regards to K2 or some users saying, well, this is going to be legal? Is there a confusion there? That's a good question. I was reading something that some people feel that legalization of marijuana will undercut the necessity for having something like K2. Because mm. if you can get legal marijuana, and you can, you know, indulge, uh, what's the need for K2? Yeah. Uh, so there, there could be some interesting spin-off uh, in society's favor yeah. with legalization as far as K2s goes. Okay, so, so it's a dangerous drug. It's, it's a danger to your health. But correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't it legal up to 2015? Well, again, another interesting point, because what was happening was that the people were fabricating uh, K2 were using various chemical concoctions that sometimes would skate the law of being illegal. Mm -hmm. They weren't quite the, the components that uh, venture into illegality. And I don't want to get too far into the weeds, no pun intended, but, uh, uh, you know, the, the police and the authorities were having a hard time trying to amend the regulations to try to deal mm -hmm. with the evolving concoctions that mm -hmm. they would pre be presented with. So, uh, you know, and up to a point, it, you know, it has been considered somewhat legal, uh, but then it's been now, you know, the offensive is on. I read from your reports that, at least until recently, bodegas and small stores were kind of like the distribution center. That's true. Centers of K2. Why? Why that and, and what's been happening lately? Well, the bodegas, you know, in communities which are lower, you know, lower economic, lower income uh, parts of the city, uh, the cost of K2 is not you know, terribly high. Uh, they're easy outlets which people can go to. They're, they're in the neighborhoods all the time, uh, the locations, and you can get them. And you can go in and it's, uh, bodegas, you know, they get a bad rap for a lot of things, but they, unfortunately, you know, some of them were dealing with K2. You know, uh, uh, just a, a recent article, um, in a recent article I read that uh, Sharpton's uh, National Action Network was boycotting these stores or actually putting X's red X's on stores that they felt were, were distributing this drug. And the NYPD has gone after That's some true. of these bodegas. So, so if the bodegas shut down the centers, how is this drug being distributed now? Well, then the, the bodegas necessarily will give the product to runners, or they'll be in touch with runners who will take the, the product and give. It's like the old networks on the Lower East Side where you used to have the cocaine and heroin going yeah. out to runners. That situation is evolving, and that's what the NYPD is seeing. Uh, and, you know, some bodegas hit with fines and civil penalties are just going to have to stay away from it. Yeah. Uh, you would think that might be a deterrent. And who's using this drug? Well, it's, it's all age groups. It's people in the low teens, 13 years old, to as high as 70. Uh, really? Yeah, you know, there are senior citizens using it. And the, the wide gamut. There's a wide range of people using this uh, stuff. So what happens next? I mean, the NYPD is going after it. And in fact, it's, it's you know, that the fact that the 240 cases um, of hospitalizations and overdoses happen in Brooklyn, is that concentrated to just a couple of geographic areas, this problem? And what's the NYPD yeah, it, doing it about it? Yeah, it seems to have been the, the sort of Brownsville area and the environs around, around Brownsville. 
two years ago, we had uh, Upper Manhattan on the east side, uh, uh, East Harlem, and those are places. So it, it's, 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 a, it's a shifting target mm -hmm. uh, in a sense. But uh, what happens now? Uh, the NYPD is going to go after the suppliers. They had the big arrest uh, a week or so ago of uh, about four people and mm -hmm. 1,600 packets of stuff mm -hmm. uh, with all sorts of exotic names. And they're very interestingly packaged. They're, they're packaged attractive. like, like for, for kids, are they purposely packaging these things to allure the kids to you? It's, I don't know, but it, you look at them and you think, this looks like the old bubblegum, uh, baseball bu card yeah. bubblegum uh, wrappers that you used to see. You know, very brightly colored, good artwork, uh, with names like uh, Hulk and whatever. And look, some, a young kid looks at this stuff, picks it up, yeah. and think it's, it's probably candy or something. All right, well listen, thank you so much for joining us to talk about this. We'll get you back as the situation, as the situation. progresses. Yeah, as it develops. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. you.